Hi, I'm Gina Robert with Acoustic Guitar, and today we're going to talk about stereo handheld portable recorders. We're going to go through the features and uh, benefits of each model, and at the end we're going to talk about uh, how you'd use them in a practical sense to record acoustic guitars. The selection here represents a, a variety of the recorders that are on the market, and I just grabbed the closest one to me. They're great for recording live concerts, but also classroom uh, work or demo work, songwriting, anything you really need a recording, uh, recording of. And you can tell by the various uh, sizes and shapes that some are more geared towards one or the other application. And we'll run through those applications as I explain the different models. Uh, for example, in this model here, we've got uh, external mics that move. Some of them have uh, fixed mics. All of them have a screen that allows you to see uh, recording levels and file names and numbers and other data that you might need. They all have uh, controls for stop, start, record, uh, re rewind, and fast forward and things like that. And all of them have the typical I.O. that you would expect on a recorder such as headphone output, external mic input, as well as a card slot if they run off of SD and micro SD cards. Some of them have an internal hard drive. And these drives can also hold uh, non-audio files. Any kind of audio file that you can drag and drop from your computer will typically load and be carried around inside the recorder. Uh, they can run on batteries, which is, makes them obviously portable and perfect for recording in situations that you don't have AC around. And many of them also have an AC adapter, so you can plug them in if you're going to have a long session or a long uh, recording. You also have the, the uh, and some of them, a built-in mono speaker, which is really quite handy when you want to make sure that you are, you know, getting uh, audio that's not distorted. Otherwise, you have to plug in a pair of headphones or earbuds and listen back. An important feature that distinguishes one model from another is the set of microphones. For example, we have the Yamaha C24, which has a pair of omnidirectional fixed position microphones on it. And it also has a built-in USB connector, which fits into the slot of this handy stand, which can be clipped onto any surface, typically a, a, a music stand, which makes it perfect for recording lessons or classes or even as uh, a de for uh, capturing demos. The Roland R05 also has omnidirectional mics on it. A little uh, bit of a larger screen and the button area is larger and more spacious, which is maybe a consideration if you're like me and you have fat fingers. It also is uh, more of a cell phone shape. It's easier to uh, keep track of it. However, you will want to use a typically a camera stand, a uh, video camera stand, to position or place it, although it, it will also be easily placed on a surface when you want to record. Another example of the recorder with fixed omni capsules is the Marantz PMD 620. As you can see, it's got a very intuitive interface like the Roland, and it also has a card slot in the bottom as well as a USB port, so it's very convenient to uh, change cards or also to plug into your computer. Remarkably, there's quite a, a range in price between these three models. The uh, Yamaha Pocketrack C24 is 149th Street, wh whereas the Roland R05 is 199th Street, and the Marantz PMD 620 is 399. The next distinguishing feature between these models are directional cardioid microphones. In this case, we have the, these three models. The mics are positioned at XY, stereo. The uh, Yamaha Pocketrack W24 has the microphones uh, in a fixed XY position. Everything else is very much the same as the C24 or the other models in that you've got a screen, you've got uh, controls, you have a built-in speaker, and a very portable unit that fits easily in a pocket, hence the name. The PCM-D50 from Sony uh, has a slightly different feel to it. You can actually move the capsules either to a straight AB setting or in a spaced configuration like so, and they snap into place, uh, which makes it perfect for recording concert uh, duos or uh, small, uh, large ensembles in that kind of position or a concert recording when it's in a XY position like this. The Tascam DR07 Mark II also has positional capsules. In this case, they can be either XY or in a space configuration like that. 
It has the external input and the mic input on the top in between the capsules. One of the main reasons to go with directional microphones is that they allow you to capture more of the direct source that you're recording, say the band or your singer-songwriter, than the audience or the room sound. With the omnidirectional microphones, you'll capture everything around the environment. So if you're recording in a concert, you hear as much of the audience shuffling and sneezing and talking as you do the music. When you want to hear just the music on stage or just your voice and your guitar in a studio or in a room, the directional mics uh, provide that and they reject a lot of the room tone. The nice thing about posi the positioning capabilities is that it allows you to capture a wider uh, source. If you have a full stage with musicians both on the far left and on the far right, then of course you can position the mics to pick that up. Otherwise you can keep them in XY and get a very nice stereo left and right sound. You would not get a, a really good divided stereo sound using a pair of Omni mics placed so close. You would get a sort of monoish stereo signal, which is great. Again, if you're just capturing lessons or capturing songwriting ideas or doing uh, demos. But when you really want to capture something that you want to listen to with a full stereo feel, the directional, the pair of directional mics is really the level you want to begin working at. As with the omnidirectional recorders, the units that have directional mics also vary widely in price. The Tascam DR-07 Mark II streets for $149, while the Pocket Track W24 from Yamaha uh, streets for $229. The Sony PCM D50 uh, streets for uh, $499. So it's quite a, a big difference there. The next set of features include the ability to record multiple channels at a time, either with multiple microphones, the Roland R26 has uh, two sets of built-in mics, or using a pair of built-in XLR inputs, which allow you to use the external mic of your choice. In the case of the R26, you have a directional pair and a pair of omnidirectional mics, which you can record to separate tracks, as well as the external mics. In the case of the Zoom H4n, you have a pair of directional mics that can be positioned by rotating them, as well as the uh, external mic inputs that accept any sort of uh, phantom-powered uh, condenser mic or dynamic mic. In the case of the prices for these recorders, the Zoom H4n is $299, while the Roland R26 is $499. Other portable recording options include devices like the Boss Micro BR BR80, which is an 8-track multi-tracker that has a pair of omnidirectional built-in mics, uh, I.O. for recording direct into it, and the ability to store audio on a micro, uh, on an SD card. If you have an iPhone, there are also options for portable recording. Uh, you can purchase a, a standalone mic that plugs directly into uh, the multi-pin connector there. In this case, we have the Tascam IM2, which is $79. It has directional mics that rotate, allowing you to position them uh, towards whatever source you're recording when you lay the iPhone down. And uh, when you purchase the unit, it does include an app from Tascam that allows you to record two-track audio, and it also includes EQ and some other uh, nice features. But there are a number of apps for stereo and multi-track recording online in the App Store that are relatively inexpensive. What makes these units really handy to use is that they have a standard SD or micro SD card which can usually pop in or pop out at the bottom here or on the side so you can use cards sometimes up to 32 gigabytes for very long recordings and you also have the plug and play ability of using a a mini uh, USB connector to plug into the unit while you have a standard USB connector to plug into your computer so you can drag and drop files directly from the unit you don't have to wait for the thing to download sound, but it's just a matter of pulling the files off the computer and putting them in your session. As you can see, there's a lot of variability between models. Everything from the size of the interface and the buttons to the interior features such as a tuner, a metronome, and even in some cases a rhythm track. So it's worth going to a store and holding a couple, maybe trying a couple out in order to get a feel for them before you make a decision because it's not only the sound of the unit but how easy it is for you to use that will help you decide which one is the right unit. Now that we've talked about the features in the recorders, let's look on how to use them. Their size makes them very convenient to place. 
But first of all, we have to figure out the best place to put them. Uh, with the devices that have omnidirectional capsules, it's not such a big deal where they're pointing because they're going to capture everything in the room. So really, it's proximity. The closer the instrument is to the recorder, the more of the direct sound you're going to get. So in this case, we're in a fairly uh, dry sounding room, so it's not going to be a problem uh, to uh, have too much room ambience overwhelm the guitar sound. But I, first, I want to figure out the best sounding place in the guitar. And the way I do that is by moving my ear close to where the guitarist, uh, where the guitar is while the guitarist is playing. So in this case, my guitarist, Taya, will play a little bit. And by covering one ear while he's playing, I get a sense with the other ear where the best sound is coming either off of the board or around this area here. Typically, it's the safest bet to point directional microphones around where the frets and the body align here. Either the 12th, 14th, something in this area here. It gives you a nice blend of the body sound and the strings if you have a stereo recording or a mono mic. In this case, when I listen, I'm ha hearing a very nice sound in this area here. So I, by moving the, the, the uh, recorder back a little bit, I'll get a blend of the body and a little bit of the brightness of this area here. If I push the microphones too close to the sound hole, however, I'll tend to hear a woofiness. So really what I want to capture is either the body sound itself resonating or this area here, which combines the body and the upper string sound. So in this case, because it's, a, it's uh, a pair of Omni mics on this recorder, I'm going to place it probably about uh, 12 to 15 inches away from the instrument, uh, pointing to the part where the neck meets the body, and put it into record, and I'll watch the levels here while he plays, and then adjust them accordingly. <laughs> case, uh, he's playing at a, a very stable volume, so I'm not going to put the uh, limiter on, but if I was recording in a situation where there were drums or the potential of having a very large dynamic range where the volume might overwhelm the recorder, I would turn on the limiter so that any loud sound will not distort the recording, will just be turned down automatically. But in this case, I'm going to leave the limiter off, and then all I simply have to do is go into record mode, make sure that the timer is moving. I've got a really nice uh, level here, and I can let Taya play. Some of the models allow you to name each file or give it a unique identity, but typically they give sequential numbers so you can keep track of what you've recorded. And you can also set day and time so that you know that Today was the day that I recorded Taya. Maybe tomorrow I record somebody else. I can identify that by the date and time that's on the file name itself. When you have a recorder that has directional cardioid mics, uh, positioning is a little bit more important because you want to make sure that you're capturing the sound clearly, the parts of the uh, sound that you want to uh, capture as opposed to the room sound or a portion of the guitar that doesn't sound as good. In this case, I decided to set it up for two guitars because with the Sony PCM D50, we can reposition the capsules either as a space pair or as an XY. I chose space pair to get separation between the two instruments. Consequently, this microphone will pick up my guitar directly, whereas uh, this microphone will pick up Taya's playing. And then when we play, we'll end up with a stereo file that you can pretty much separate the two instruments. On the other hand, if I wanted to capture a simple stereo recording that I might want to later release on a CD. I can simply squeeze these together and reposition them in an XY fashion. And now I have more of a traditional uh, recording situation where um, we still are in individual channels, but there's a little bit, it's gonna be a little bit more blend based on how this picks up. And this is also a very good position to use uh, for concert recording in a standard setting. The nice thing about the directionality is again, it'll reject a lot of the sound of the audience and capture mostly what's in front of it. The key is positioning in a, in a room, finding the right place 
whether it's in a cafe or in a club. And that takes a little bit of practice. Sometimes if you have time before a concert or performance starts, you can have a chance to do a sound check, position it, say, uh, 10 or 15 feet if there's a PA, or uh, 18 uh, inches to maybe 3 or 4 feet away if it's on stage and it's not in the way of anything in an acoustic environment. In this case, since we're in a, in a room, I want to get as uh, intimate a sound as possible. The farther away the recorder is, the less intimate it is, but more the more room you get, uh, the more of the personality of the space that you're in is captured. And that's something you want to consider when you're recording things. Now when you're just tracking a demo or you're um, just recording for fun, a jam session, uh, placement really is, isn't as critical. But it does help to experiment a little bit. Again, in this case, I'm not worried so much about uh, where it is in terms of the guitars. I can, in, I, in fact, I can move my guitar easier than it is to reposition this when there's two of us. One thing to keep in mind, however, when you're recording with directional mics is that if you move a lot while you play like this, this the projection of the instrument is also moving and you might hear a little bit of that in your uh, recording if the instrument is doing this. You'll hear sort of a phasing kind of sound. So if it's a really critical recording, you want your performers or yourself to be as stationary as possible while moving. It's also interesting that the body is the resonant source of the guitar's sound. So um, the more of it you cover with your arm and your body, the more dull the instrument's going to be. And I've seen some players, players actually arch their arm out a little bit so that they're not deadening the top while they play in a critical recording. Um, but sometimes if that doesn't feel right or if that's uh, uncomfortable and causes you to you know, makes it unable makes it unable for you to play, then of course you want to just be as comfortable as possible and relaxed as possible. But sometimes you want to be sure that you're not covering up uh, the most important part of the guitar's sound while you're tracking something that's going to be, you know, something you want to put on a CD or something that means a lot to you in terms of the recording quality. Now let's talk about the use of external microphones with portable recorders. Typically people purchase these small uh, stereo microphones that have a mini plug and they plug these into the recorder and these will run off of the plug-in power which you can turn on and off uh, under a menu. In this case I have a Tascam microphone, the uh, TMST1, which is a mid-side microphone. Sounds excellent. It's a, it's a pretty significant upgrade from the sound of the small omnidirectional uh, devices, so it's worth investing a few dollars in one of these external mics. In the case of the larger recorders that have XLR inputs, the professional grade connector, mic input like this. You just simply connect the mic of your choice. In this case, I've got a pair of condenser microphones. Uh, the, this unit, the uh, Roland R26, has phantom power, so I would simply plug the mic cable into the unit like this. And I've got a stereo pair here, ready to go. And then I can turn on the phantom power, and then I'd be able to use in this case, this, these uh, small diaphragm microphones. Now, in the case of the Zoom H4n and the Roland R26, you can record uh, several tracks simultaneously. Uh, with the Roland unit, I have a pair of directional microphones that will give me a stereo uh, a file, and then I have a pair of omnidirectional microphones for a stereo file, and then I have these external mics. So I can have three stereo files and get three different sounds which I can later blend together in my recording. One option is to use a pair of studio grade microphones in order to capture the complex characteristics of your instrument and then use the built-in microphones in the complex larger unit to capture room sound or get a, a more of a distance recording and then blend those three together. So uh, although I don't have enough room in this room right now, in a concert recording I might actually place the Roland unit perhaps 10 or 15 feet away from the instrument while I have the external mics anywhere from say 18 inches to 2 or 3 feet away uh, depending on the sound of the instrument or if I had two instruments I could perhaps do this as a spaced pair and capture one or each of the instruments on either side while getting the room sound on this recorder here. Uh, for more information about this look online at AcousticGuitar.com for the article I wrote about these models and uh, thank you for watching. I'm Gina Robert for Acoustic Guitar.